Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, we pause for a moment asking for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Gracious God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance bring it to fruition. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you are God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over the hearts of the children of Israel. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, gazing, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, have been transformed into the same image from glory to glory, as from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since we have this ministry, through the mercy shown us, we are not discharged, discouraged. And even though our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this age has blinded the mind of the unbelievers, so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he pro proclaims peace for his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Kindness and truth will meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our lands shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother or sister will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother or sister, Racha, will be miserable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that a brother or sister has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first and be reconciled, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus seems very determined to surpass the Old Testament laws and prescriptions. And for some people, this could become uh, a cause for scrupulosity to live a perfect kind of life, which we know is so very difficult. But in Paul, in his um, exhortation to the church in Corinth, he continues a contrast between the gospel of Jesus and that of the law of Moses. Some in that Corinthian church were, well, the reality of the situation was they were insisting on circumcision for males uh, if they were going to become part of this new way in Jesus, as well uh, as the way for their own salvation. Of course, Paul rails against this in the end, even at the church in Jerusalem. He's saying that some listen to the law of Moses as if, as if they wear a veil. That image is used, which obscures their vision from all that has already been fulfilled in God's saving plan, especially in Jesus. And he sees that all those whom he had formed as a community, as church, are better able to see within their hearts the glory of the Lord Jesus and the power of his fulfillment. In other words, he's saying, keep your priorities straight. Jesus, of course, in the gospel, tries to have his people think differently. We don't always see things that way from our 21st century uh, perspective, but Jesus was pretty radical for that first century time. He taught that the problems with their legalistic thinking, even as they saw themselves living in strict orthodox observance of Jewish law. He's saying to his followers that even if a devout Jew kept all of the precepts of the Mosaic law, they would be missing something much more important, something greater. Jesus warns against missing living in God's ways, that legal observance of rules and regulations and laws is inadequate. Instead, he proposes an approach to life that calls for a limitless ethic. That's difficult. Limitless. To be totally open to love. To be totally open to other people, even those who think differently. Getting rid of all anger, all hate, all resentment. And Jesus seems to raise the bar, 
or at least challenge those of that time as well as us today who read the gospel to think differently, to think in new ways. Today we should really ask ourselves, what veils or clouds or prevents us from seeing as God sees in fresh new ways, especially with the many new issues that challenge us as church in this 21st century, things that the church has never had to wrestle with before. You can fill in the blanks. <clears throat> in a daily devotional that I get, uh, Living with Christ, a, a couple of years ago, there was a quote by a, a certain gentleman who wrote for that publication. His name is Steve Givens. He, he writes, the veil is anything that clouds our vision and our minds, our addictions, our doubts, our giving into relativism, our self-deceptions, our greed, our feelings, and our human desires. The veil allows us to see, but not clearly. And the good news is that that veil or covering is very easily removed in the light of faith. It's a light veil, uh, white-wise, and of little substance. It can be swept away easily if we are open in the power of the Spirit. Today, we pray that the Lord would remove from us anything that prevents us from seeing and approaching situations as God would, with mercy, compassion, and love. Um, whatever that prevents us from being more attentive to God or how the Spirit would guide us. When do you get stuck? When do I get stuck? Even following all the beautiful disciplines and prescriptions of our faith, um, the things that we've been taught, and when do we really end up missing responding to a particular and different situation with God's viewpoint, God's understanding and mercy. The prayer over the gifts for today is very interesting. It reads, may our offering be an acceptable oblation, which means a sacrificial giving of all who we are, and lead us, Lord, to grow in charity, to grow in love. Love is not easy. So how might the Holy Spirit encourage us all to see more clearly how we might live more fully, not running from newer challenges, but meeting the needs of the people of today as Jesus would? Gracious God, allow us your guidance that we would live your truth in love as we bring you our prayers. That all members of the church, along with its bishops, pastors, and ministers, trust in the Holy Spirit, seeing with unveiled faces to tend to the needs of all who hunger for meaning, acceptance, and the power of God's love. We pray to the Lord. that each of us find ways to live more fully in Christ Jesus, being attentive to the ways of mercy and reconciliation, removing anything that prevents us from living with greater understanding and love. We pray to the Lord. That the leaders of cities and nations see clearly the need to preserve God-given gifts of the earth, to uphold human dignity, and to work to end hatred, violence, and war, always allowing kindness and truth to meet and justice and peace to kiss. We pray to the Lord. That the sick and the hospitalized, those who struggle with cancer, those who are approaching surgery, and all who ask for our prayers each and every day, Turn to God for strength that they would find the depths of the Lord's healing, we pray to the Lord. And that all who have died, especially Jean Mulligan, who 
This Mass is offered. Now come to the fullness of God's light and glory, which is the fullness of our healing. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, open our minds, open our hearts, that in the power of your Holy Spirit we would trust you for all that we need as we strive to live in your Son, Christ Jesus the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, gift of the earth, work of human hands, may it become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the very divinity of the Christ, for he humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our almighty and loving God. O Lord, look kindly upon our service that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in love, in charity, through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself, he was born of the Virgin, and by the passion of the cross, he set us free from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life which is eternal. And so now with all the angels, the archangels, the thrones, the dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing out the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, who is present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we pray, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, gracious Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, He whom you led to His passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until He comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son. We have communion. Bring your people, the Church, O Lord, to perfect faith, charity, and the fullness of unity, together with Francis, who is our Pope, the Bishop of Rome, Blaise, our Bishop here in Chicago, with all the bishops, the clergy, those in religious life, and the entire people you have formed as your own. Open our eyes that we would see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and in actions that we would comfort those who labor and are burdened. Allow us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May the church forever stand as a living witness to truth, to freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, especially as we remember this day your servant, Jean Mulligan. Bring him and all the dead whose faith you alone have known to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when this our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we would come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in the communion of the saints with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Holy Apostles, the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We turn to one another and offer some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
blood of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, may your healing work free us, we pray, from doing evil, all that is wrong, and lead us to do what is right, through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth to live the gospel by our lives. Have a great day, everyone.